Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Sockbot, and today I did a lot of shooting. A lot of shooting video about shooting. Anyways, I don't know if you remember the promo shots of Little Big Planet 2 or the video previews of Little Big Planet 2 and 3, but there were a lot of these types of top down arcade shooting games, sort of like Asteroids, if you remember that game. Honestly, the only re reason that I remember it in particular is because my stepdad had one in the basement for some reason when I was a kid. And no, we were not rich, and no, I don't know why we had it, because I never saw him play it. But hey, that was like my first experience, so I thought it might be relatable. But anyways, I don't know if that's really why I started loving arcade games like this, but since then I have played a lot of similar ship shooter, arcade shooter, twin stick shooter games like Geometry Wars, and other similar games with kind of different settings like Smash TV. Um, and fun fact about Geometry Wars, my friend Julie and I actually had a competition going on a while ago with Geometry Wars because, well, one, she was my only friend on Xbox Live, but two, we found this one weird mode that we really liked, and so that was the weird thing about this competition, because, it, well, for this one weird special mode, you didn't shoot at all. Instead, you just had to kite the enemies around and hit these special enemies that would explode when you ran into them, and it's this one specific part of them, rather, but anyways, weird side story, but that's kind of to show that I really do like these games, and I have liked them for a while, and as we lead into dreams for videos in general, I, I want to start talking about, you know, more universal game creation stuff. So, that combined with my love for these games, combined with the fact that I never really got to play a lot in, of these games in Little Big Planet, and combined with the fact that there are a lot of these games in Little Big Planet, brought us here to this video, where herein slash therefore slash thus implies that I want to discuss what I think makes a good top-down shooter slash arcade shooter, and some aspects of top-down shooters, arcade shooters, that I think are universal to good game making because I may know something about that, but I clearly don't know anything about good sentence making. Regardless, if you like this kind of discussion video, please leave a like down below and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, but as always, Musquire, no pressure. Alright, I'm sorry, that was like super cheesy, but let's get started. So to prepare for this video, I filmed a bunch of footage of top-down shooter, arcade shooter type games. I'm just going to say top-down shooter because that's how I see them, which are also known as twin stick shooters for some of them. But anyways, I had a lot of footage, but I wanted to show the initial impression as I learned to play these games. Trust me, I spent way too long filming because I always get obsessed when I find an arcade game I like, and there were quite a few here. But no, before you ask, I didn't get any high scores. The best that I did was about a sixth of the high score, and that one was after a 25 minute run of one of my favorite of these levels, so maybe that gives you some idea of how long I spent playing for this. Now there were a few things that I found to be prevalent in these levels that worked and seemed to make them particularly fun. First was the basic idea and the basic controls. For an arcade game in general, and especially for one like this where you're going to be starting and restarting a lot, you need a control set that's easy to learn. Uh, twin stick shooters work super well for this because honestly it's the simplest it can get. One stick moves and the other stick shoots. Pretty simple. So why, may I ask, that some of these levels required you to mash the friggin' R1 button over and over to shoot? I mean, pressing it at all is kind of silly when you have to aim and there's no ammo, but why would it not be on auto-fire? That literally stopped me from continuing to play the first one that I showed in this video because my hand truly got exhausted, and trust me, my right hand is very strong from scratching my head so much when people make dirty jokes that I don't understand. <clears throat> but, and this is getting into number two, this basic control scheme has to be used well. I played a bunch of these games that you had the classic hit R2 or hit random button to use a bomb, and this bomb was basically only used if you were caught in a pinch. Now adding this does entirely nothing if it's literally just a panic button. That was the case for a couple of these levels, and for those, I felt like there was no need to use it because if I got in a situation where I needed it, I was either already dead for one, or I was at a point in the game where I wouldn't survive much longer anyways. This one level, the bubble shooting level, did this entire thing much better, because it encouraged you to use the bombs as part of the game's rhythm, not just as a panic button. To elaborate, this game got me into an awesome rhythm while I played it, where I would go in between shooting and building up my ultimate shooting power-up that I would use when it was built up, and then in between those two things, using the bombs just to survive. 
it was a super satisfying rhythm and it made the bombs and the ultimate shooting power up part of the entire game as opposed to a silly panic button like a lot of the other games do. I mean even Geometry Wars does that. I will come back to this in a bit for like games in general, but I want to talk about one more thing for top-down shooters specifically. So number three has to do with progression. For an arcade game, this can be a really tough thing to nail as you want the progression to allow new players to get engrossed in the game, so you want to start it slow, but you also want a game where players who will play it a bunch of games in a row, well, they want it to ramp up at a level where they won't get bored if they've played, you know, 20 times of the same level and they just continue playing the game trying to get a high score. So you have to make a game where a player can play the same section over and over, not get bored, but also make this entire thing interesting and accessible to new players. Yeah, I know, that sounds hard, and I think it is, but I also think that that's where there are so many different subcategories, even within this pretty specific category of top-down shooters, and, and why they all exist. There's the Asteroids and Geometry Wars type shooters, there's the Galaga and Space Invaders type shooters, and, well, there's all of their evolutions throughout the years. They all do progression very differently, but the basic idea is that the longer you go on, the more enemies, and in a lot of them, the longer you go on, the more powerful you get. Some shooters then take away that power when you die though, which I frankly think is hilarious and kind of stupid, but I suppose if we're kind of looking further into it, it makes sense to give you another sense of progression as you build your power up after a death. Galaga does this, and so does this military shooter that I featured in this video, and so I guess that's a good example of it working in some respects. Still, some don't power you up at all, and I think that's a bit of a missed opportunity in a lot of different games. Yeah, I get it, it can make subsequent playthroughs uh, make you feel a little bit weak at the beginning if you were so used to playing as a super powered up version of your character, but going back to the bubble shooter because it was honestly my favorite, there are definitely ways around this. The flow from that shooter had you building up your ultimate power and getting bombs faster and faster as the game went on. You went against harder enemies to counter this, so it felt hectic in a fun way, even though it was really the same game and the same enemies, just faster. Still, these arena types, I mean asteroids and geometry wars and the bubble shooter here, do lack a type of progression that the military one did have, and that's a bit more of a traditional type of progression where you fly through new level after new level and the environment continues to change. This is totally cool and it could lend itself super well to a more long form top down shooter where you go from level to level and you can kind of save after each level until you get to the end of the game. But then there's also the issue of time going into the level making versus making the game actually fun. But regardless, it's a toss up, I guess. And I think that those types of games are a bit outside the scope of this video because they're not really arcade games. But moving outside these games to a more general perspective slash what did I learn from this, I think that these games are a fantastic example of two things. For one, these games show how small refinement of mechanics like the controls and the very simple power-ups can leave a huge impact on how fun a game is to play. The intense difficulty that comes in the later levels of top-down shooters or twin-stick shooters, again, whatever you want to call them, is really only possible in arcade games, but past that, the difference between playing the bubble game here and the comet shooter game that's later on in this video is enormous when they're nearly the exact same game, but the one with the simpler graphics, that's the bubble one, just wins out. And it's not based on the ultimate meter, which is, I guess, the biggest difference between them, but it's based on the very slight change of how you're expected to use the bombs not as a panic button but as a consistently expected mechanic. Building on that, the second thing that I took away from playing a bunch of these and kind of trying to review them myself was how different games even within a specific genre can be. The biggest difference between Galaga and Centipede back in the day was like literally one axis. In Galaga, you could only move left and right, and in Asteroids or in, in, in general games like that, you could move in all 2D directions. But that very small difference exploded into so many different game types that we can see these like today. They spawn into basically everything from Sin and Punishment, if you play that on the Wii, to Geometry Wars on like every platform ever, to Smash TV, which is a fantastic arcade game if you haven't played, but they're all pretty darn similar at their core, yet they all feel so, so unique to each other. 
I guess what I'm trying to say is that arcade shooters or top-down shooters or twin-stick shooters, whatever you want to call them, these games really show how big of a difference such a small change can make, and I hope that this helps you when you're creating your own levels. Honestly, this idea helped me think past the whole, oh, this game has totally been made before, or this game that I'm making is too similar to this other game that I've played before, and honestly, I'm glad that I was reminded of this example, because it really is a good example of something to get you past that concept. Even if it is similar, that small change can make it such a different game that it is completely still worth making. But anyways, that's today's video, so let me know what you guys think of this type of game and this type of video. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I hope you are all having a fantastic day. But for now, I bid you a very high-pitched goodbye. Alright everyone, that's a wrap. Good shoot. <laughs> oh my god, that was awful. If we're still listening, I'm sorry. Just kidding, I'm not sorry. Demi Lovato, 2018.